Okay, since the past few days, I've been seeing that a lot of you guys were commenting in my videos like, hey Vimal, can you build a complete gaming PC using only AMD parts, like both the CPU and GPU from AMD? Well, that is what I'll be doing exactly in this video, guys. And let me tell you, this gaming PC build is going to offer you like killer performance for the price. Let's get started. Hey guys, it's Vimal here and welcome back to another video on my channel. So today's video is going to be absolutely lit guys because as I've told you just now, we will be building a full AMD gaming PC. I'll be using both the CPU and GPU from AMD only and the CPU that I'm using is a brand new Ryzen 3 3300X. A lot of you guys only wanted me to use that CPU for my next build because see it offers like really decent performance at an affordable price tag. That is the main reason I'm using it and you know I'll be coupling this CPU with a Radeon GPU from AMD and you know making this build. We'll get back to that point at a later part but before that let me just quickly tell you the parts that I'll be using for this build guys. And you know before we get started I want to give a huge shout out to TPS Tech. If you guys don't know TPS Tech is an online computer store guys. They sell a lot of computer parts, computer components and accessories stuff like that. Uh, you have to visit their website. I'll just you know leave a link to their website in the description box below. Go check it out there. Alright then, coming to the components, first let me tell you about the CPU. As I've told you just now, the CPU is Ryzen 3 3300X, which is a 4-core 8-thread CPU with a base clock frequency of 3.8GHz and a max boost clock frequency of 4.3GHz. See guys, this is like an excellent value for money CPU on a budget. You know, you'll get excellent 1080p gaming. Uh, you'll only get to see the performance once we are done with the build. So that is the CPU. Now, if you talk about the GPU, the GPU I'm using is Radeon 5500 XT guys that comes with 8 gigs of VRAM. It's like a perfect combo 3300X with 5500 XT deadly performance on a budget guys you're gonna experience ultimate 1080p gaming on a bu budget so that was about the cpu and gpu now coming to the motherboard motherboard is like very interesting in this build the motherboard i'll be using is a b550 chipset motherboard from amd see if you're tight on a budget in this build you can settle down for a b450 also but let me tell you there are a lot of benefits and advantages uh, by choosing b550 over a 450 first thing is b550 is like future proof guys especially considering the fact that ryzen's next gen you know fourth gen cpus are just around the corner they might be launching very soon so now if you buy a ryzen 3 3100 or 3300x you'll definitely plan on upgrading to the next gen ryzen cpus right so in that case b550 motherboards are ready for them you don't need to buy a new motherboard again just change the cpu and you're all good to go that's why b550 has like better advantages on top of that it supports dual gpus also and has like pci gen 4 ready support also a lot of uh, advantages guys so b550 is better and recommendable now in b550 the model i'll be using is from asus it's the tough gaming b550 m edition motherboard guys see let me tell you the tough gaming is like one of my favorites especially because of the features that it offers it offers like very good vrm solutions and next gen connectivity options like it's got onboard wi-fi 6 bluetooth has thunderbolt header also like you know great for productivity thing and one more excellent feature is AI noise cancelling microphone guys. This is something really useful for a lot of people, not just gamers. I'll give you a demo of this feature and tell you how this thing works and why it's useful at a later part in the video. Don't miss that. And also guys, make sure to watch this video till the end because I'll be giving some BIOS tips as well like uh, BIOS tweaks and customizations you can do to bring the max performance out of this PC. So make sure to watch this video till the end. Now if you talk about the RAM, RAM I'm using is from HyperX. It's a 16 GB Fury RGB RAM clocked at 3466 megahertz. So that was about the RAM. Now what else is left? Power supply. If you talk about the power supply, a 550 watt power supply is like more than enough for this build. I'm using the CV 550 power supply from Corsair. It's 80 plus bronze rated power supply guys. And lastly, if you talk about the case, the case I'm using is also from Corsair. It's their Corsair 110R case guys. Very nice case on a budget. Uh, it's got like complete black theme, has a side transparent acrylic panel to show off the beautiful RGB components and also has a PSU shroud for neat cable management. 
Well, these are the components that I'll be using for this build. I'm like super excited to show you how this build looks like and how it performs. So let's quickly get started with the assembling. So as I always say guys, assembling a gaming PC is super simple. All you need to do is carefully watch my video till the end and follow all the instructions step by step. Alright, the first thing you'll need to do is install the CPU on this B550 motherboard. Just open the socket and before installing the CPU, always make sure to align the gold triangle mark on the processor with the engraved triangle on the socket. Once you do that, gently drop the CPU in the socket just like this. After that, pull down the lever to lock the CPU in its place. And that's it guys, we are done with the installation of the CPU. Now time to install the cooler on it. See, we are using only a stock cooler here which already comes with a pre-applied layer of thermal paste so you don't need to apply again separately. Place the cooler on top of the CPU, align it such that all the screw holes match and now start fixing all the screws. Installation of the stock cooler is very simple, a beginner can also do it easily. Go in a zigzag pattern while tightening the screws and lastly connect the cooler's 4-pin fan cable to the CPU fan header on your motherboard to finish the installation of the cooler. Alright, moving on, time to install the RAM sticks. We are using two 8GB RAM sticks from HyperX, so that sums up to a total of 16 gigs of RAM clocked at 3466 MHz. Install the RAM sticks in the primary slots, but before you do that, make sure to check for the notch and the RAM direction. Just open the lever and push it gently until the lever locks itself. And we are done with the installation of the RAM as well. Time to place a motherboard in the cabinet. But before that, don't forget to fix the IO shield. One more thing I'd like to mention over here is, some expensive MOBOs come already with a pre-installed IO shield, so you don't need to fix it manually. Alright, take the tough B550 motherboard and install it in the case. The Corsair 110R is a mid-tower case that supports most of the motherboards like ATX, Micro ATX as well as Mini ITX. Just place the motherboard over here, align it such that all the screw holes on the board match with the spacers on the case. Now take some hardware fixing screws that you get in the box and start fixing them. As I always say, go in a zigzag pattern and don't over tighten the screws. So we're almost done with the build, the only few things left are the GPU, power supply and the storage. Here's our Radeon 5500 XT from AMD, we're using this GPU in our build. So graphic card should always be installed in the PCI slot closest to the CPU. Ok now lastly let's install the power supply and wrap up the build. Even though the 110R is a budget friendly case from Corsair, they've done a good job by including a separate compartment for the PSU with a PSU shroud so that you can easily hide all the cables and give a neat look to your build. Place the power supply here with the fan facing downwards and fix it using some screws. And that's it guys we're done with the assembling part. So what I'll do is I'll quickly connect all the cables, install the storage drives and be right back to continue the video. Alright I'm back and this is how our brand new AMD build looks like. Since we were using the tough gaming motherboard, I've decided to give the build a complete tough theme and put some beautiful tough stickers everywhere. If you ask about the cabling, the cabling part was also very simple guys. Three main cables that you'll have to check for while connecting are the 24 pin motherboard cable, an 8 pin cable for the CPU and an 8 pin cable for the GPU. That's it, the remaining all are the simple stuff like the front panel IO cables, like you've got power, reset, HD audio and stuff like that. You know, what I'll do is I'll make a separate tutorial on how to connect and where to connect all these cables in your PC. So make sure to subscribe and stay tuned to our channel. Ok, so let's quickly power it on and see how this bad boy looks like. Sweet, not bad for the price. This is mainly a performance build right, so not much of RGB you'll get to see because of the tight budget we were on. But let me tell you that black and gold color scheme of the tough series that we've used on this build looks very cool. Just check out these beautiful shots of the PC. Wow, that looks beautiful right? You know guys, I can just keep on staring at these builds forever. It gives me some kind of nice satisfaction from the inside. Don't you guys agree with that? 
PC building is love for me and I'm sure this PC definitely deserves a thumbs up so make sure to smash that like button guys. And this is the setup that we'll be using today. As usual my 1080p IPS monitor from LG and the peripherals are from Corsair. So first before we jump into the performance section, let me give you all a small BIOS tip that will help you boost your gaming performance. This trick works on all the motherboards, just the layout and the UI might be different. The BIOS on this tough board is very good I feel as it offers a lot of tweaking features and the best part is the UI. Everything is like easy to understand right from the start. So the thing is a lot of people after building their PC think that their RAM is already running at the max OC clock frequency. But let me tell you that is not the case. Usually the OC XMP profiles are disabled by default and you will have to manually enable them from the BIOS. It's very simple to do that guys. All you need to do is you see this DOCP option here which is currently disabled. Click on that and select the XMP profile one. You'll get some notices like this but that is nothing to worry about. There you go. Now you can see that your RAM is running at its max OC profile mentioned by the brand. So this is how you can easily overclock your RAM to bring out the best results. Next time I'm gonna tell you how to overclock your CPU. Alright so let's jump into the gaming and see how this build performs. We'll be playing some AAA title demanding games and check out the performance. By the way I'm using a joystick to play all these games and you can keep a check on the performance stats at the top right corner of the screen. All these games will be played at 1080p resolution only with the graphics set to ultra. Damn son, are you guys looking at those frame rates? We were easily getting an average frame rate of around 120 frames per second on Doom Eternal at 1080p ultra graphic settings. See, I told you right, Ryzen 3 3300X is a monster CPU on a budget. Pair it with a capable GPU like the 5500XT from AMD and boom, ultimate 1080p gaming experience. The gameplay feels buttery smooth with fluidic movements and I haven't faced any sorts of lags or stutters till now. Let's also play GTA 5 and see. We're playing this game also at 1080p resolution with the graphics set to very high. So let's see how it goes. Very good results. On an average, we were getting a frame rate of around 80 frames per second. See, now one thing I'd like to mention is, after playing for like 25 to 30 minutes, the Ryzen CPU was reaching a temperature of around 75 to 80 degrees centigrade. It's basically a hot running chip, so I would advise you to save some money and invest in a good air or liquid cooler. A 120mm AIO would be fine for this setup and it'll bring down those temperatures. Well, that was about the performance. Now, remember I told you about the AI noise cancelling feature on the tough B550 motherboard at the beginning of this video? It's a very useful feature which can be easily toggled through the Armory Crate app. What it does is it completely removes the background noise from your microphone, either while doing voice chats in gaming or even online meetings and gives you a crystal clear voice output. Let me give you all a demo and show you how well this feature works in real time. And the best part is, it doesn't even affect your gaming performance, unlike Nvidia's RTX voice feature. Alright guys, so let me quickly give you a demo on ASUS AI noise cancelling feature. So right now the audio sample that you are hearing in the video is with the feature turned off and this is how your usual voice will sound through your microphone. Now what I'll do is I'll quickly turn on the AI noise cancelling from the Armory Create app and show you the difference. Okay, so now I have turned on the AI noise cancelling microphone feature on and this is how the audio sounds like. Hello, check, one, two, three. Can you see the difference? There's a big difference, right? So this is how AI noise cancelling works. Hello, check, one, two, three. 
Well, that's pretty much it. Time to wrap it up. Let me quickly summarize all the component prices for this build. Ryzen 3 3300X costs around 12,900 rupees in India. The Asus Tough Gaming B550 motherboard costs around 15,000. But if you're a bit tight on a budget, you can go with the B450 as well. The HyperX Fury RGB RAM 16GB kit costs 12,200 rupees, and the Radeon RX 5500 XT 8GB GPU is priced around 19,000 rupees. If you talk about the PSU, Corsair CV550 costs 4,400, and Corsair's 110R budget case costs around 3,450 rupees. And lastly, coming to the storage section. I'll leave this up to you depending on your requirement. A basic 240GB SSD from any brand will cost you around 2500 rupees. So the total budget of this build comes down to 64,150 rupees. And this, my friends, is one of the best configs you can build around this price range. Well, that's it for today. I hope you all really enjoyed the video and felt it useful. Make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more new awesome videos. And I'll see you all in my next one.